But now, Film 83, presented by Ian Johnson from the Cannes Film Festival. And uh, we walked up the prom, they call it the, the croissant or something here, yeah. can't call it, you know. We walked up and we and they said to me, um, now we're going to take you to a place where, you know, it's the place to be seen in Cannes, where everybody goes to be seen, and they were right, they were all there being seen, all these trendy, terribly sort of cool trendies, you know, the French do it better than anybody. And they were all in there, and, we went there, and there was somebody being photographed. There were millions of photographers around, and you never see that. You only ever see that in films about famous people. You know, I've never seen so many. You couldn't see who was the other side. So, all, you know, you're all peering, trying to see who it was. And suddenly, from out of the crowd, this man was ejected. I mean, and in the air, you know, he flew out of the crowd, and another man followed him, and this fight ensued. There were parasols, you know, those umbrellas. I don't know whether you know that it's French for umbrella, going everywhere, and there were people flashing all these, all these trendy French people, you know, going all along, you know, sacre bleu and that sort of thing. And I thought, well, you could be in the magpie and stump, really, having a pint of beer. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> This week, a slightly different programme. We've popped down to Cannes for a few days to bring you a flavour of the film festival. This year, it's the 36th. Always something of a contradiction in terms to come here, the, the jewel of the Mediterranean, and then sit inside looking at movies. But most people spend most of their energies having a tax-deductible good time. The main talking point of the festival this year isn't any of the 22 main films in competition. It's the new Palais, where the festival's being held for the first time. What should be a stately pleasure dome looks horribly like a design for an underground car park. Even the local French shared my low opinion of the architecture. By the time we arrived, it had been assaulted with blood bombs and generally defaced. Ah, an aesthetic revolt, I thought. But no, it was the aftermath of a riot by French medical students. Like all students everywhere, they didn't want any more exams, so they'd staged their own version of Carry On Doctor. As a journalist at Cannes, you feel a bit like a student on your first day at a new college, intimidated by your surroundings, lost in this multi-layered maze of corridors and conference rooms, and confounded by the rules and regulations of getting into things. The first screening of the day is at 8.30 a.m., a tortuous hour for those who have reveled late into the night. And in the press room, that student feeling again, it's exam time as fellow journalists scoop you with stories you never even heard about. How reassuring then to bump into an old chum on the terrace of his posh hotel. Mm. What's it like living in this big hotel? Do they, do they treat you royally? Are you talking to me? <laughs> yes. Oh, sorry, I thought you? it was him over there. Oh, you never know at this place. This hotel you're talking about, yeah, it's... Um, do they treat you royally? No. Most of the stars in town are imprisoned in two vast hotels, the Brixton and Wormwood Scrubs of Cannes. Here at the Carlton, people must pass through the triumphal arch of Roger Moore, reincarnated yet again as James Bond and surrounded this time by a lot of octopuses. Over at the Majestic, the more sedate of these two overpriced gin palaces, where a glass of water can cost a fiver, they've got James Bond again. Only this time, the reincarnation is Sean Connery. This distinction helped drunken producers find their way home at night. Take me to the Roger Moore Hotel, they would tell their taxi drivers. Occasionally, when enough photographers were amassed, an escape would be orchestrated. Here's Nastasia Kinski trying to nip quickly, well, not too quickly, into her car. <laughs> The event has the frisson of someone leaving a courthouse after giving evidence at a notorious kidnapping trial. The photographers know their snaps will show a reflected car window out of focus, but they play their parts with determination. Do you want to know anything else? I haven't seen any films. That's the only thing that's wrong with the place. There's this film festival going on. It'd be wonderful without that. 
Did you know? Every morning it's Nuremberg when actors and producers try to justify their movies. Today's press conference is crammed because one of the biggest stars in the world is here. Ironically, not primarily a movie star. Okay, one more minute, and that's all. David Bowie that's plays an army officer in Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence, a film set in a Japanese prisoner of war camp and directed by Nagisa Oshima. Is it worth coming to Cannes to cope with the pressures of Cannes to sell a movie like Merry Christmas? <laughs> I think that um, a cultural co-production like Merry Christmas deserves every poundage of health that it can get because it's, uh, otherwise it can be relegated to a position of an art movie. It's awful, really, uh, unbelievably diabolical. Um, I do it very rarely. This is like the second time I've done it in, in God knows how many years. But this, I, I appreciate the value of doing it. There's time to make, uh, to be public with things. I mean, I, I don't know. I've always been a pretty private person, but I think I, I'm changing somewhat that I think it's now important for me as an artist to, it's, it's slowly dawned on me that, that part of an artist's responsibility is to make himself open to um, the people that are trying to understand his work. Still not at ease with the situation, but it's, it's, it, it start, it's making sense now. Do you agree 100% with Oshima? Is the final product the way it would have been if you'd directed it? No, absolutely not. It would be absolutely nothing like that. I mean, I, there's no way I could, I could even remotely get near to the kind of work that Oshima has done. Uh, it's so inherently from a Japanese sensibility that it's, um, it's uh, just an impossibility. I, I guess it would have been a complete, it would have been the antithesis. It would have be, become a complete readdressment of the, of the Japanese Western situation. Uh, he's got a, such a peculiar balance in the movie between the stylistic acting of the Japanese, which he's retained, and the neo-realist acting of the Westerners, and kept them against each other's, produced this almost dream state. How would you be? Not guilty. I'm not a criminal. I am a soldier with His Majesty's Army. One month ago, I came out of the Jar Jar Simpoa Mountains. I surrendered to Colonel Utsumi of the Imperial Japanese Army. I was imprisoned at Tsukubumi. I was kept for three days in solitary confinement. Then I was questioned by Lieutenant Ito. He asked me my name and my rank, and I told him. Then Lieutenant Ito asked me, is that true? I replied, of course it is. I'm with the British Army. Do you mean you will never give a false name? Let me ask you something. Why would a man who's about to die give a false name? A Japanese soldier, if caught, would give a false name. But then, a Japanese soldier would never submit to being caught. He would prefer to die. But then, I'm not a Japanese. Why? Did you refuse to tell the interrogating officer anything about yourself? You must tell us your past history. My past is my business. I read that one of the reasons you're moving towards a slightly more altruistic form of art now is because of your son, Zowie Bowie. You sort of felt you owed it to him. Is that the case? I think it, it's become more than just a debt. I mean, yeah, it, it, I think that being a... Again, it's funny, but the, the, all the basic truths sound so simple and naive, but they are, and there's no getting around it. Being a father makes a hell of a lot of difference. And when you start to see your life through your son's life and, and vice versa, something makes sense again, when, when sense might have gone a few years previously. There's a return to not good old-fashioned values by any means, because I, I, I still support change, but that one can harness the energies of uh, being an artist into some kind of positive direction. And uh, uh, my son was instrumental in, in pulling me to that kind of direction.